Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover how to model the rotor using the finite element analysis through a commercial software. Most rotor dynamic analysis mainly addresses the lateral vibration of the shaft supported by its bearings. In this video, I'm going to use Excel Rotor. You could get a demo version from its website. The focus will be on the lateral vibration and how to model the rotor and how to validate and verify the model. The analysis starts with creating the rotor geometry. And here's an example of a simple rotor that I'm going to model in Excel Rotor software. Excel Rotor is an Excel-based rotor dynamic analysis tool. The Excel Rotor uses the Microsoft Excel as an interface. So when you open the Excel Rotor, you could see the Excel spreadsheet as you could see here. And above add-ins are the command tab which gives multiple options to run the software. The bottom worksheets are where the inputs are loaded and the outputs are shown. Let's jump right into the worksheet called Shaft Input, as you could see in the bottom below. The required inputs are shown on the top of the sheet, and the inputs are mainly rotor outer diameter, inner diameter, length, and the material properties. Once you put all your geometry information, please press above Update Geometry Plot in the Command tab. Then the software builds up the rotor geometry, which looks like this on the left figure. From here, you could perform multiple analysis. But before you perform any vibration analysis, you need to verify and validate your model. What I mean by validating the model is that you need to check if your model represents well the actual rotor as shown in the photo on the right. First thing you could do is to check the dimensions as you could see in the left figure. The second thing you should look into is the shaft weight and the shaft moment of inertia. To check these properties, go to station sheet. The station sheet shows the output of rotor weight, polar moment of inertia, and transverse moment of inertia. Now you have to compare the outputs from the software to your measurement. So measure the rotor weight on a scale and compare the result with the software output. You could estimate the both polar and transverse moment of inertia by using a simple pendulum method where the equation is shown here. And the measurements were conducted with pendulum oscillation of a small rotational angles, say less than 10 degrees. The mass moment of inertia is a very important parameter in rotor dynamics because the physical definition of inertia is the property of the body or an object to resist the acceleration. By following these steps, you could verify your model and gain confidence that your model represents well the actual rotor. But this is not the end. Now we have to also check the natural frequencies of the rotor and this is a very important step to validate your model. To check the rotor natural frequencies, press free free calculation in the command tab. Then the software calculates the free free natural frequencies, which represents the natural frequencies of a rotor hanging freely on the cables. If you want to understand the mode shapes of the rotor, press mode shape in the command tab. Then the software gives the mode shape of the first and the second natural frequencies. These first and second mode shapes are very typical for the beam or the rod shaped objects, and the rotor is essentially a rod. Now, it is important for you to measure natural frequencies by performing impact tests. You will need accelerometer and power supplier and signal analyzer. Now, first thing you should do is hang the rotor using the cable or a rope. Then you attach two accelerometers on the shaft. The reason you are putting two accelerometers is to measure the mode shapes. If you just need to measure the natural frequencies, you just need one accelerometer. Now you connect the accelerometer to the power supply and then to the signal analyzer. 
after all the equipment is ready, tap the rotor gently and then record the measurement. If you are measuring the mode shape, you will need to repeat the impact test with the change in location of the accelerometer. Here is the result from the impact test after processing the test data. The measurement of the rotor first natural frequencies matches well with the prediction and the mode shape of the first natural frequencies also looks very similar to the prediction. On the other hand, the second natural frequency shows 16% difference between the prediction and the measurement. This kind of difference is very typical in the modeling the rotor dynamics because most of the rotor assembly is not made with one single piece and the interference fit between the parts can affect the natural frequencies. So as you gain more experiences modeling the rotors, you will probably learn your own know-hows or tricks to model the rotor better to represent well the actual rotor that is assembled out of different materials. Today we covered how to model a rotor in a finite element software called Excel Rotor and how to validate your model to impact test and other measurements. In my next video, I'll focus on the lateral vibration analysis and how the analysis is done and used. Thanks for watching.